Apparently, Kevin Garnett, I, I'm unfamiliar with Kevin Garnett, but he's like a basketball player, and he was a Jehovah's Witness. He was on Jimmy Kimmel. You kept your high school basketball career a secret from your mother. How old were you when she found out you were playing on the high school basketball team? She found out when I was a junior in high school. Well, I made it in eighth grade. Uh -huh. I made varsity in eighth grade, and she was like, what? No, you're going to go to school. You're going to focus on education. I want you to get into these books. You know, another word with sports, you know, that word with sports, right? Uh -huh. And it was like, no. So she was really into education. and wanted Well, I understand that uh, he, he was a Jehovah's Witness, to my knowledge. And Jehovah's Witnesses do not allow their kids to play in sports team or play on sports teams in sports leagues or whatever in school. That's like forbidden. I was not allowed to play football. I don't even know how football works to this day, honestly. Had somebody explain it to me once. I don't even remember now because I wasn't allowed to take part. I wasn't allowed to participate in sports when I was younger, unless Jehovah's Witnesses were doing it, in which case I could. But who the hell, like, organizes, you know, a football game with Jehovah's Witnesses? And were we invited to it? Oh, if they were holding those games, then no, not really. We weren't really invited as a family. Anyway, wow, to hide it from your mom, imagine that. From 9th to 11th grade, he hid it from his mom. Jesus. He wanted us to focus on, and we were Jehovah's Witnesses, we were very disciplined kids. You guys were, most of your events revolved around the church. The Kingdom Hall, as it's called. The Kingdom Hall, yes. Yeah, he, he knows. They don't like the word church, it bothers him. And so when she found out that you were playing, how did she find out that you were playing? My mother uh, was a beautician. Uh, Dude, how do you even do that? How do you hide it? You have games and stuff at night, don't you? Wouldn't you have to, like, attend basketball games at 6 p.m.? How do you get out of the house at 6 p.m. without raising red flags? I, I can see practice after school, maybe say, oh, school ends at, like, 4 instead of 3. I could see that, I suppose. But... I'm just not connecting the dots on this one. Wow. After years of working in a factory at 3M, she started her own business and started doing hair in the neighborhood. And uh, one of the girls who I go to school with came in and got her hair done and was like, yo, I got to hurry up and get my hair done. I'm going to see Kevin play tonight. She's like, what? Yeah, I'm going to see Kevin. You don't know? Oh, boy. Girl, Kevin's good. You ain't see your son? She's like, Kevin who? She's like, your son. <laughs> and I'll never forget, I was in the layup line, kind of laying it up. And it was just a typical another night against a rival. And it was a big night. And my mom walked in, my little sister, and I just almost, almost pooped on myself, man. <laughs> it, was not, it was not good, Jimmy. It was not good. And then so I, I have to wonder, like, what she did. Right? What did she do when she found this out? And obviously she saw that you were good and committed to this. And no. No. <laughs> no, I would be surprised. I, I would think that she ordered him to stop. Because you just don't play in sports with other people. With non-Jehovah's Witnesses. You don't get involved with non-Jehovah's Witnesses at all. Quick note before we continue, I want to let you know I just wrote a book. If you want to check it out, owenmorgan.com slash book. It's a book about my experiences within Jehovah's Witnesses. It's completely understandable if you know nothing about Jehovah's Witnesses. And if you're a Christian, it's a good reference to use for why Jehovah's Witnesses are wrong about their interpretation of the Bible. The last chapter of the book is 100 questions that I have for the governing body. I'm selling the last chapter separately as its own separate guide if you guys want to get that too. So check it out, owenmorgan.com slash book. I'd appreciate that. It was not good. It was like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm going to kill you. Enjoy the game. Mm -hmm. kind of like <laughs> Forced enough, I had a good... I mean, he's joking about this. This isn't really actually funny. This is really sad, you know. He's making light of it because that's how he deals with it. I get it. But it's really sad for him that he had to go through this, you know? And, and for me, and for every other ex Jehovah's Witness out there, this is part of the deal. You, this is what we went through, you know? This dude probably knocked on doors too. This dude probably got chased by dogs too, in addition to me, and Childish Gambino, and Biggie, and Selena Gomez, and Michael Jackson, and uh, Dave Mustaine. All these people understand, they know, just like I do. They know what it was like, and it sucked. Mm, kind of <laughs> Fortunately enough, I had a good game, but I was I was living out there. But as time went, she saw that I was very passionate about what I was talking about. And I was well, he refused to stop. And, you know, at a certain age, you can't stop a kid from doing what they want to do. They're, they're going to do it one way or another. He's got to hope you taught them well. So I guess he reached an age where she just, you know, 11th grade, she couldn't 
stop him from doing what he wanted to do. He's not a Jehovah's Witness today, presumably, so. I went, she saw that I was very passionate about what I was talking about, and I was very committed. That still didn't work. But after seeing and seeing how, like, committed I was, I think that, you know, obviously going to the NBA would change any parent's kind of mindset of, oh, wow, yeah. okay, he is kind of, he's decent. Uh, <laughs> hey, look, I need you to come to this thing called the draft. I'm getting ready to get selected in, <laughs> to the NBA. What? Like, yeah, are you serious? Yes, Mom, I'm very serious. Wow. Yeah. Wow. My mom worked a lot, man. So, you know, I had opportunities to dib and dab here and there. So, yeah. Shout out to my mom. Wait, I, I, I don't know. Dib and dab? Come on, yo. And you get to the NBA and you're being paid a lot of money, obviously, but you don't trust banks. At more this money time. than I was before, sure. Yeah. Yes, more money than you were making in high school. Yeah. So, you, instead of putting your money in the bank, what do you do with that? You know, I was kind of raised with a certain pedigree and a mindset. So, I wasn't introduced to wires or just. just Fintech. I, I wasn't. I wasn't financial savvy. And, and okay, that's that's not necessarily Jehovah's Witness thing, but I can see them trying to stick in a traditionalist kind of uh, mindset. That you know that that checks out. That may not have anything to do with being Jehovah's Witness, though. It's probably a bad situation that was made worse by Jehovah's Witnesses. That'd be my guess. Fintech. I love to use that word. I used to be in fintech, financial technology. I was a uh, you know, writing software for banks and credit unions. They do not like being confused with each other at all, it turns out. They get livid. If you call a bank a credit union, get ready for some swearing. Anyway, that's why you just use financial institutions. But it sounds to me like she's still a Jehovah's Witness and he has a good relationship with her, surprisingly. Must not have ever gotten baptized. Somebody asked, why can't they play sports? Well, playing sports is okay. That's fine. It's just not being around outsiders, not hanging out with non-Jehovah's Witnesses. That is what's wrong. And a part of playing on a sports team by necessity means that you have to be around other non-Jehovah's Witnesses. You have to spend time away from Jehovah, quote unquote. It's not a rule where you'll get shunned to fellowships for it. It's, a, it's just a cultural thing. Jehovah's Witnesses just don't do it. You just don't play sports in high school. You just don't. You don't play sports with outsiders. You don't hang out with outsiders. And none of it. And uh, I didn't know about a direct deposit. I didn't know none of this. And so when I Yeah, I mean, Jehovah's Witnesses very sheltered. Uh, leaving Jehovah's Witnesses, I knew nothing. Certainly nothing about social uh, interaction. I was completely separated from the world in that way. And learning it is like an uphill battle. It's a struggle. When I would get my check, I'd go cash it and, you know, bring it home and I would put it under my mattress. So I did so this for two years. You would I, take a check. How much was, like, your weekly check? I don't want to talk check. about how much money I have. When do that. But you would hand it to somebody where? No, At no, a bank no. or a check cashing place? Come, no, Jimmy, I would go to a bank, go into a bank, <laughs> plenty of professional people with guards, and I would actually do the, you know, and they would give me my money, came in the bag, and I had a whole little system, and I would go home and put it under my mattress. I mean... It couldn't have been like millions, could it, to fit under a mattress? My God, why would you do that? that, that that's a quick way to cause a mattress to be lumpy. For 10 years, I did that. What was the most, well, how much money did you have? Uh, For 10 years? Under that I don't mat. want to talk about that, Jim. <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, that's, that's a totally different thing. So he's a Jehovah's Witness, or an ex-Jehovah's Witness, I guess. Kevin Garnett. God, like people, ex-Jehovah's Witnesses are everywhere. Like, you don't even know where they are until they just come out. Dude, are you kidding me? Leave me alone, please. Uh, let's see. Got kicked off Renaissance of Prep to Pro players by jumping directly from high school to the NBA, paving the way for the likes of Kobe Bryant, Jerm uh, Jermaine O'Neal, Tracy McGrady, and LeBron James. Wow. That was in 95. That's fascinating. Oh, there's a documentary about him? Oh, it de debuts on Showtime. Fascinating. Okay. He told Kimmel he's raised a Jehovah's Witness, came from a very disciplined household. He uses the word disciplined. That has a positive connotation. If he were not being positive about Jehovah's Witnesses, I would expect that he'd use a word like strict or punishing rather than disciplined. So I don't know. I guess we'll find out soon. If the dude, you know, is positive about Jehovah's Witnesses or negative, hope for the best.